I am Weird Al Yankovic, and I am Barack Obama's 14th cousin twice removed. I'm also Ronald Reagan's 15th cousin twice removed. I'm also related to Lady Gaga. She's my sixth great aunt's second great uncle's wife's uncle's wife's second cousin seven times removed. Hey cousin, I'm Olivia Munn. I really, really want you to come to the big family tree event because we're all cousins and there are a few people there who owe me money. What's up cousins? It's me, your cousin, Morgan Spurlock, and I want to see you at the Big Ass Family Reunion. I'm going to be there. Get your ticket today. We're going to have an amazing time. Well, my name is George Bush and I'm a cousin to AJ Jacobs. It's been great pleasure. Hi, I'm Daniel Radcliffe and I'm a cousin of AJ Jacobs and so are you. And we're probably cousins as well. And the person who you send this video on to is probably my cousin and they're probably yours and we are all probably cousins as well. And if you'd like to find out more about that, you should come to the Massive Family Reunion. Hi, I'm Seth Rogen and I'm your cousin. It's true, right now there are some scientists and researchers building a family tree of the entire world. All seven billion of us. I'm on the family tree, James Franco's on it, you're on it, or you will be soon. Hello, everybody. Hello, Internet world. My name is Michael Ian Black, and this is uh, my cousin, AJ Jacobs. That's true. Um, all right. So, AJ, why don't we start with just some definitions? Tell me uh, exactly what the Global Family Reunion Festival is. Well, it is a festival this Saturday, and it is a family reunion for the entire world. So everyone, all seven billion people are invited. And it's going to be a festival. It's going to have 50 speakers and uh, activities. And Sister Sledge is coming to sing We Are Family. So we're going to break some world records. <laughs> what world records are you expecting to break? Most people singing uh, We Are Family. What is the <laughs> current record of people singing We Are I don't, Family? I don't think it's been recorded. So right. that's the be, best kind of record. You're establishing a world record. That's right. That's a very good way of saying it. And we also have 40 simultaneous family reunions around the world. So we're going to have, we're going to establish the record for most simultaneous family reunions. And of the 7 billion people on Earth, how many billion do you expect to be at the reunion this Saturday <laughs> in New York? I'm hoping for like a 50% turnout, mm -hmm. so like 3.5. <laughs> uh, no, we're probably going to have about three to 5,000 uh, in New York, but, um, which is, I think that's enough. I think that's good. I'm, but we want more, so everyone is invited. So I know you got the uh, idea for this after becoming interested in genealogy. Why don't you share with the audience a little bit of the history of this project? Well, it started because two years ago I got an email from a guy and he said, you don't know me, but I'm your 12th cousin. And as you can imagine, I thought the next email was, here's my Nigerian bank account, please <laughs> wire $10,000. But it turns out he's part of this team of people who are building the biggest family tree ever. And it's not even a tree, it's a forest. It is literally, right now, 240 million people all connected by blood and marriage. So I'm on this tree, as you saw. Uh, Weird Al is on it, Obama's on it, you are on it. So, and we can now trace a path between almost any two people in the world, and anyone can join. That's one of the things at the family reunion. If you come, we have a team of genealogists who will try to connect you to the family tree. That's very cool. Now, what percentage of DNA do two random people share? Well, we all share, as humans, 99.9% .9 of our DNA. And that's part of the idea, is to show we really are so close. Uh, you know, humans are, we really are a family. You know, you heard it when you were a kid, but now we can scientifically prove it. So, uh, uh, you know, now I have seven billion cousins. Mm -hmm. And um, you've talked about this project as being a way to sort of bring people together. Right. And I don't think, you know, I don't think it's going to, like on June 7th, the day after, I don't believe that wars will cease and racism will end. But I do. I do. <laughs> I appreciate your optimism. I need that. Uh, but I do think that it'll help nudge us in the right direction. Because when you do realize, I'll give you one example. Uh, you're familiar with Judge Judy. Sure. Sure. 
Uh, She's uh, my cousin. Yes, she is. That's right. Well, I always found her incredibly abrasive, just nails on the chalkboard. Then, as you say, I found out she's my eighth cousin four times removed, and it's, I was like, you know what? She's not so bad. She's just Cousin Judy. She's just, like, underneath, she's a softie. So it, it lets you give the benefit of the doubt to people. And that's a small example, I know. But I do think that, uh, it, you know, it's, it's bad news for bigots, just how interrelated we all are. There is no such thing as racial purity. Has there been anybody uh, that you've stumbled across that you know of or knew personally that you were surprised at how close you were? Uh, I, I'm very close to Mayim Bialik. Is that how you say your name? Mm -hmm. so I don't that, know. If, I, I'm saying yes. I don't know how you say her name. But I love her. She's Blossom. I know how to say Blossom. Right. Uh, so I'll just say Blossom. And uh, so that was exciting. Also, Mila Kunis. Uh, she, you know, I'm an Oh, Ashkenazi. yeah, I see the resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly How right. How close are you to Mila Kunis? What's that? How close are you to Mila Kunis? We are on the, we have the same haplo group. I'm mm. not 100% sure what that means, but I know that it means we are like, we are tight. Right. Uh, I would, my next question is going to be, what's a haplogroup? But you just said you don't know. <laughs> I do kind of know what it is. It is uh, it's just almost a branch of the genetics. Because that's another part of this. The, the whole industry is being revolutionized in two ways. One, and When you say industry, you mean the genealogical industry? Yeah, family trees and ancestry. One is these online trees, which are being worked on. It's like Wikipedia, but for family trees. So you've got thousands of people working all over the world on the same family tree on these sites like Genie and Mocavo and Family Search and Wikitree. Then you've got the DNA, and that is revolutionizing it too, because you can take these tests and see, they'll send you a list of hundreds of cousins. And I actually did this test, and my, I had my wife do it, and uh, we compared, and uh, we're cousins. So <laughs> that was, that was enough. I actually was okay with it. I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, it gave some like spice to the marriage. Oh yeah. But uh, but my wife was like freaked out. So. Well, how clo how how close was it? Well, it was more like seventh or eighth cousin. Oh, that's it wasn't, fine. Yeah. I mean, we are. She wasn't your sister, was she? <laughs> no, so it's no, no. fine. Well, I will tell you this though. This has been when I've been researching this topic. One of the themes is first cousin marriage and what is should we be allowed to have first cousin marriage legally half the states in america allow it and half don't and and some people namely first cousins who are married see this as the next marriage equality fight they think that they should be allowed to marry why not it's an old taboo uh and there are there admittedly you have a slightly higher chance of birth defects but if that's true... <laughs> Birth uh, defects are hilarious. I am with you. <laughs> but, uh, but if, you, if, if you follow that logic, what about two people who have the Alzheimer's gene but who are not, right. dis, who are not related at all? Are you going to stop them from getting married? So it's actually a fascinating issue. So anyway, the point is, at the Global Family Reunion, you can like meet your wife. It's going like, to be... Uh, right, meet your cousin and your wife. That's yeah. an exciting... Tagline, perhaps, <laughs> for the reunion. Now, my wife's parents are second cousins. Interesting. And, uh, and they made her, and she's kind of a dope, but I don't think there's anything <laughs> genetically wrong with her. <laughs> no, I mean, second cousin marriage is That's like fine. huge. That is like, I read a statistic uh, by a Rutgers uh, scientist, so not like crazy talk, that 80% of marriages throughout history where second cousin or closer. Right, I guess that makes sense because people traveled so little yeah. throughout history that of course the people that you come in contact with are gonna be related to you exactly. by blood in some you capacity. So you mentioned how uh, genealogy is being revolutionized. Are there consequences, real life consequences as a result of this uh, revolution in genealogy? Well, I think there's, there's quite a few. One is just scientifically, we've now got this massive tree. And in 10 years, it's going to be almost all 7 billion of us on the same tree. And this is an amazing data set for scientists so they can see how diseases are passed down. And again, I do think that it's going to hopefully make us a little, a little more menchi or whatever the female equivalent of menchi is. Mencha. 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 Uh, 
and uh, so yeah, I'm very, uh, I'm very excited. I'm, I have not been more excited about a project in my life. And you have done a number of exciting projects. AJ Jacobs, uh, known probably best for the year of living biblically. That is true. That uh, is true. Which I... is a, he wrote a best-selling book about us uh, following the tenets of the Old Testament specifically. It was uh, mostly the Old Testament. That's right. All, all like 700 of them. So I did the famous ones, Love Your Neighbor, Ten Commandments. Uh, and I, but I also did the less famous ones, you know, like don't shave the corners of your beard. I didn't know where the corners were, so I just let the whole thing grow. And, uh, you know, I, I did spend a lot of time at airport security, as you can imagine. Uh, so, yeah, that was interesting. I actually, I read your Wikipedia page before, uh, before this, and you know what the last line in your Wikipedia page is? No. Michael Ian Black is an atheist. That's ah. right there. So they, uh, that's how they end it. I felt it was a very, <laughs> it was like a, a very profound ending. Like, well, it will be my ending, uh, <laughs> one way or another. So when you dive into these projects, I guess my, my reference to your living biblically is a way of saying that you really dive in. So what has surprised you the most in your genealogical research? Uh, just how incredibly interrelated we all are. I mean, it is, it is astounding. I'll, I do a column for People Magazine where I interview a celebrity cousin every month. And uh, I interviewed, like, last month was Ludacris. Mm -hmm. And we actually found, the researchers found on the Internet this amazing file of an interview with his great-grandmother that he never knew existed. And it was about, and one of the things we found was that his great-great-grandfather was Jewish. So Ludacris, I got to inform Ludacris that he was a member of the tribe, that he was Mishpukka. I bet he was. Any chance he'll change his, change his name to Judacris? <laughs> <laughs> or Meshuga. And Meshuga, that might be his Hebrew name. Um, so you're, are you, you're writing a book now about all of this, aren't yes. you? Yes. I mean, I've been so busy uh, with this reunion that I haven't had time to write the book properly. But uh, eventually there will be a book, and I'm excited because to me it's a fascinating topic. But yeah, most of my time is just spent like getting people to talk and uh, getting them to come and uh, dealing with permits and all that. I'm like an event planner. I'm an event planner. Right, like for, for, the for biggest, humanity. For humanity, exactly. Like a bar mitzvah for all of humanity. That's and uh, for people who don't know, all the proceeds from this are actually going to Alzheimer's research. That is true. That is true. AJ Jacobs not making a dime. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's right. You can buy tickets. I'll just plug it now. Yeah, so please. Why not? Globalfamilyreunion.com. And uh, yeah, they're 30 bucks, but with the code, uh, you can get them. What's that code? Speaker. Use that's, that code is like 25% off. Great. There's something poignant, I think, and maybe this is by design, about funds going to Alzheimer's research. Obviously, Alzheimer's robs you of your identity, and, and what this is is a, is a way of sort of uh, informing people of, of their identity. Well, that identity. was it. And my grandfather had it, and it robbed him of the family stories. And that's, to me, what family is all about, those stories and memories. And I just, you know, all the stories about his childhood that I, I never got to hear. Cause, you know, he, has, he was, uh, you know, he lived in a tenement. He had an amazing childhood. It, it was not pleasant childhood. Like his, his stepmother, he had a literal evil stepmother who locked the, they didn't have refrigerators, but locked the icebox. So uh, that's, you know, that's what Alzheimer's robs us of. Hmm. Um, By the way, since I know we're, we're not going to have all our time, I do want to turn the tables a little because, one, you're a cousin. Two, you're a beloved entertainer. So beloved. <laughs> so I think these people would want to hear from you as well as from me. So can you tell us, uh, I know that you've got, the new podcast, you got the Gaffigan show. I mean, I first of all, what's what is your time management like? Because you have like forty two jobs every time I see you. Well, I clearly have time to come do this. Yeah, so, I know. <laughs> That's weird. I will very briefly tell you what I'm doing because this isn't about me. Uh, yes, I have a new podcast called How to Be Amazing, which you can find new episodes on Audible, old episodes on iTunes. The new show, the Jim Gaffigan show. Another new show called Wet Hot American Summer, First Day of Camp, which is on Netflix. 
Now, and let it, me ask you that for one second. Yeah. Are the characters, uh, have they aged or are they like cryogenically? Okay, so Wet Hot American Summer is a, a movie we made in 2000. It came out in 2001 about camp counselors. At the time, we were all about 30 playing 16, 17-year-olds. That was the last day of camp. Now, this year, it's 15 years later, but we're playing, our, we're playing the same characters on the first day of camp. <laughs> so we're now 15 years older, playing about two months younger. Interesting. And I look the same. I'm sure. Sure. Paul Rudd looks the same. <laughs> Bradley Cooper looks the same. Some people do not look the same. Like, I mean, you can't say that without naming some names. Uh, well, Michael Showalter, who uh, played Coop in the original, he's now like 80 pounds heavier. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only one. Um, so there's that, and then there's another TV show called Another Period, which is on Comedy Central, and that comes out right at the same time. And a movie called Smosh, which also comes out at the same time. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and a book that comes out in January, and another book that comes out in October. Whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not about me. It's not I'm about doing me. one project, and uh, you're making me feel absolutely terrible. Uh, yeah, and there's two other podcasts. Uh, one's <laughs> called... <laughs> um, no, I mean, I mean, in my case, you know, you, it's sort of like when it rains, it pours, and then, and then you just sort of sit around and twiddle your thumbs. That's true. For, for like three years, we never heard anything from you. That's you right. You were just like total That's right. loser. I've been recycling <laughs> cans for a living. Um, oh, shoot, I was going to ask you something really cool. And you want to know the people coming. That's, That's exactly it. what I was going to ask right. you. I want to know all the people that are coming and, and what people can expect at the Global Family Reunion. Well, thank you for asking. Yeah, we've got the craziest assortment of people. Like, I want it to be the most diverse event ever. Like, I just tried to describe it like the cover of a liberal arts college catalog. <laughs> like, that diverse. <laughs> so we've got uh, Henry Louis Gates, who has PBS show, um, Finding Your Roots. He's giving a talk. Morgan Spurlock, David Blaine is doing uh, magic, Mary Lou Henner, I love her, she's coming, she's a cousin, uh, and just like 50 other people, Hassan Minaj from The Daily Show, uh, so there's going to be talks, but then there's also going to be like, uh, you know, potato sack races, mm -hmm. I, want, I want to see like, you know. Uh, As any good family reunion should have, sure. potato sack race. I want, I want Dr. Gates in the potato sack going along. Will there be food? There will be food from all over the globe. It's a global family reunion. Yeah. I like that someone applauded food. People love food. It's one of my favorite <laughs> things to eat. <laughs> all right. Well, AJ, I think we should open it up uh, to questions. If anybody has any questions about genealogy or the global family reunion. Or, or what Wet Hot you. American Summer Part 2. Is that what it's called? Well, it should be called Part 1, I guess. I mean, it's sort of like Star Wars. Oh, Where yeah. the first one came right. last. Gotcha. Hi, uh... Oh, yeah. This, this question is from Periscope, and all my cousins on here want to know, how far back can you go? Like, how far into the, you were talking like six cousins, seventh cousins, how far can you go on the whole thing? Well, my, uh, my tree, it depends on the line. Some of the lines go way, way back, you know, especially if you're sort of British aristocracy. My line goes back to 1700s. But the beauty of this is that you could go sideways. So my aunt uh, married this super wasp. He's like Mayflower, right back. So through him, I like to say I'm a Mayflower descendant. Why not? You know, I am uh, by marriage. It's a little asterisk. What about um, these larger projects? How far back have they gotten? Well, it depends on whether uh, you want to do it uh, reliably or not. I mean, there are trees that go back to Adam. Uh, right. Personally, I think that that takes some leaps of faith that I'm not willing to make. But, uh, but reliably, it depends on the branch. Again, you know, some keep great records and some don't. Well, My, do we know sort of what, well, what the world record is, genealogically speaking, for how far back a family can trace its, its history? It's a good question. I know that it depends on the culture, too. Like, I know China has some amazing records going back millennia. Um, I know the English uh, aristocracy, I think 11th century, relatively reliably, possibly. Uh, but you know what? DNA is changing that because you're going to see right. who is really related to who because there is, you know, there's something in genealogy called non-paternity events, which is a euphemism for that the mother slept with some other guy. Uh -huh. So, uh, and that is anywhere between 2 and some people say 10%. Wow. 
That's probably high, but but there's a lot of people. Right, there's a lot who, of people who are going to be very surprised. That's right. So it's a. Uh, I did the 23andMe test. Did you? And what discovered, did you find? Well, two very interesting things. One, I'm 10 percent more Neanderthal than the average person. Wow. 2.9 percent Neanderthal, which made me feel incredibly masculine, maybe for the first time in my life. <laughs> And then the second thing was, this just confirmed something that I suspected. Which I'm 100%, genealogically speaking, uh, Ashkenazi Jew. 100, wow. Well, you know, v- very close point, to. Yeah. But w- and what I learned about Ashkenazis, which I didn't know, it's a, it's a sect of Judaism, uh, is that they're considered their own ethnicity because uh, there was so little intermarriage over the last 500 years among them. And so, according to Wikipedia, I have more in common with an Ethiopian Jew than I do with a European Gentile, That's which I found fascinating. That is it. Yeah, definitely the Ashkenazi Jews would love to marry each other. I, mean, I don't think anyone else would marry us. That was part of it. So uh, Yeah, well, my wife is, uh, is a Viking, so I married, <laughs> I married out of the faith. But, they, uh, but yeah, they were so intermarried... We are, that means we are blood cousins, yeah. probably like in the 7th, 8th. Some people say 30th is the farthest that two Ashkenazi Jews can be. And the farthest in the world, according to one MIT report, was 70th cousin. That's the farthest you have, like someone in Borneo is your 70th cousin. Uh, by well, blood. is it possible that, I mean, I guess, I guess the answer is no, but, you know, there's, the, there's these... Uh, you know, isolated tribes and 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 things you know that that we know about, but we don't that don't really act, interact with the outside world. Do we know how how far back it can be before there's intersection? Well, there's a big debate. I mean, some people say it was as, as early as you know ten thousand years ago, and these are not uh, creationists. But uh, most people say uh, the uh, the original Adam, the real Adam, they call him. Uh, uh, y chromosomal atom. And do we know that there is a single paternal there, ancestor? There is a sing- There are two. There's mitochondrial Eve and, and Y chromosomal atom. They were about 150,000 years ago. They were not together, probably. They were like, they, they happened. And there were thousands of Adams and Eves running around. But these are the two that all of our DNA comes from. We all have a little. So if they are all of our great, 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 keep saying that, right. grandparents. Fascinating. Any other questions from the audience? So um, I always like playing Seven Degrees of Kevin Bacon, and there's always like certain people, like if you get to Tom Cruise or if you get to Harrison Ford, like you're golden. Is there, are there people like Moses or like certain royal like crowns or like Will Chamberlain that you can come back to? It's like <laughs> you get there and you're good. Is that, that come up? Absolutely. <laughs> there is, yeah, there are certainly Kevin Bacons of genealogy. I mean, in a sense, we're all Kevin Bacon's because we all can connect. But certainly, Genghis Khan is a famous one. Mm. Uh, I um, I feel in my own family, there are some that just like uh, I am so thankful that my uncle married this waspy woman because like she just opened my family tree up uh, and uh, and let me get to you know Obama. Winston Churchill Winston and whomever. Churchill. Right. And by the way, Michael and I are 32 degrees away through your wife. It, right. I mean, there's many paths, but the one I found was through your wife. So go figure. All right. Very odd. Uh, in, in the back, you had a question. Yes. Since we're all cousins, does that mean you're related to beautiful women such as Scarlett Johansson and Halle Berry? <laughs> Thank you for asking. Yes, it does. I am related and to And you, you, incidentally. <laughs> Smooth. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes, that is true. And actually, I use, I mean, one thing about this, this cousin project, it's like the ultimate LinkedIn social network because I wanted to interview George H.W. Bush for my book, so I called up his chief of staff and said, you know what, um, I'm the president's cousin. Could I come <laughs> talk to him? And she was like, well, sure, your family. Come on down. I didn't tell her, you know. How far removed. Right, I did, actually. But anyway, um, I was able to uh, meet the lovely Chrissy Teigen, Sports mm. Illustrated supermodel, using this ploy. And uh, <laughs> I interviewed her for Esquire. Uh, she's, uh, but she is my cousin, as right. is John Legend, her husband. Right. Um, yeah, that's a very, very smart way to get in just about anywhere. Yeah, it is amazing. And it's only going to last two years, because by then, in two years, everyone is going to 
there's going to be an app where you put your phone up and it'll say, you are 14th cousin three times removed from the person next to you know, you're doing the, the iPhone bump with. So it's not going to work for long. So get on it now <laughs> and use the cousin ploy now. Drop the C word now while you still can. Yeah, I don't feel like that's the C word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm all about family, so that's, uh, for me, that is, I will, my son, yeah, he told me uh, the C word, he said, I know the C word, and, uh, and it was cuckoo, mm. and I was like, thank God, thank God, and he's like 19 years old, so it's, very, <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> Any other questions out there regarding genealogy, life, who you're related to? Uh, does, does what any, about, oh, I does, mean, some for this, uh, this great entertainer? The, well, no, uh, no, no. Does anybody have any uh, people in your family lines that you were surprised to find that you're related to? Mm, that's a good one. Yeah. Good idea. I, unfo I unfortunately started going into Ancestry.com, and I found out that I'm related to one of the captains that came over into Jamestown. And then I was disturbed because then my family tree started to loop a couple times, mm. and then it went out of Jamestown. But there was uh, oh. some interesting, yeah. There was, so uh, you're saying the cousin marriage was yeah, going on? Yeah, the cousin on. marriage thing happened. But we for just a while. discussed this. Right, yeah. Don't so, be ashamed. So, but yeah. I, and I, and I, and <laughs> embrace I was like, it. I was like, cool. I'm related to one of the people that came. It wasn't the Mayflower, but hey, it was a famous captain, and he came sure. over to Jamestown. So, well, didn't Jamestown beat the Mayflower? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I mean, Mayflower. Good, Go team. Johnny come lately, exactly. Good job. Yeah, I will say, yeah, that's nice. I mean, the one thing about this is a double-edged sword. So yes, I can figure out how I'm related to Abraham Lincoln, also related to Jeffrey Dahmer. Right. So, although that is through my wife's side. So I like <laughs> to make that clear whenever, since I am scared of her. Um, <laughs> have you checked other like uh, notorious people in the past? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've gone... Like, I've how gone, close are you to Hitler? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the obvious I, one. Right. That's where everybody's got to go. go. You got to go there. You got to go to Hitler. You got to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and unfortunately, yeah, I am linked to Hitler. I mean, that's the thing about genealogy. We, we're all linked. And that was the, one of the big controversies, as you the, might remember. Speaking of controversy, there was that recent controversy about Ben Affleck trying to uh, sort of paper over his slave-owning ancestors. What did you make of that? Oh, well, I thought that was a, a, a mistake by him because I actually thought, you know, the word, the uh, phrase teachable moment. I yeah. think that was a great teachable moment that you can rise above the, uh, your horrible uh, past, your, your ants. You are not, uh, DNA is not your destiny. You can, you can make your own decisions. I thought, uh, and we all have terrible ancestors. You know, you have, if you go eight generations back, you oh, have. Oh, if I just go to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> for those uh, others... My mother's a lovely woman. I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, we have thousands of ancestors. Some are great. Some are horrible. And the other irony is people are like, oh, I'm Ben Franklin's uh, descendant. Yes, you are, but you're also... You've got 3,999, you know, who were uh, dock workers and yeah. petty thieves and prostitutes. So I like the idea of... of being very open about I have all to of your say, in, uh, part of my new book, I did do genealogical research on my own family, and there was something very sort of uh, heartwarming and, and fascinating about learning about these simple lives that these people had. My great-great-grandfather on my father's side came over, and he was an egg candler, which is a term I'd never heard of. Uh, egg, what was that? Candler, the? like with a candle. Oh. And it just opened up like this little peek into a world that I would never have known about. And an egg candler, I will tell you. I'm still confused about the egg candler. I'm going to tell you what it is. Okay. <laughs> um, eggs, when they were fertilized uh, in egg production in the old country and in the new country before electricity, needed to be inspected. To inspect them, you would hold up an egg, and behind it, you would hold up a candle, which would show you that it's developing correctly, hence the term egg candler. Eventually, that became replaced with electric lights, and I'm sure it's done autom uh, with automation now. Right. But just those little peeks into an ancestor, into worlds that you would never know about, I find well, so fascinating. For, uh, may, as much as, or, or maybe even more than, 
uh, a famous relative. Right. Because right. it because it just takes you into these tiny corners of our history. And do you feel like does it change your view on eggs? eggs do you it, feel like I've been uh, eating I've been eating a lot more eggs yeah, as a result. Sure. And well, inspecting a lot more <laughs> eggs, which is the weird part. I know. I love. I mean, just the fact that my great great grandparents had the chutzpah to leave uh, the Ukraine or Poland and come here is astounding. I mean, I right. would have just. Uh, I guess they didn't have couches then, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would have been my inclination. So I'm incredibly grateful. It's, uh, but I've also found it very fascinating studying ancestors because it's complicated. You know, I don't have ancestry worship because uh, I do think if you go back 100 years and you met that person, you would be like, what a racist, homophobic, <laughs> har oh, a sexist, what a terrible, terrible right. person. So it's very uh, interesting. On the one hand, I am incredibly respectful and uh, and grateful. On the other hand, I'm like, they were probably people I would not want to have dinner well, with. But it's but I mean, it gets into that question, like with Ben Affleck's slave owning relatives, about how you apply the mores and conventions of today to your ancestors, and it's impossible. I mean, it's a kind of apples and oranges oranges equation. Right. Well, and imagine. I mean, that'll be interesting in like five generations. When our great 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 grandkids, when they look at and they're like, "What was AJ thinking with that shirt?" Yeah. It'll be very. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the that shirt's that's fine. the worst <laughs> thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, now, I can't imagine. I mean, they'll be like, "They, I can't believe they ate animals." Right. I don't know what it'll be. It'll be interesting. Um, any more questions? We have time for one more question. Yeah, can you actually pinpoint a time period between when you and someone else who's a distant cousin? actually had a common ancestor. Yes, yes you can. Uh, you can do it. There's the DNA testing and then the online trees. So either way. Um, and basically, when, when we use words like cousin, that means you share a grandfather. Second cousin means you share a great-grandfather. Third cousin, great-great-grandfather. So that's an easy way to remember it. So when you say eighth cousins, that means you shared nine generations back uh, an ancestor. And what, that's what these online trees at, uh, you know, Genie and My Heritage and Family Search, that's what they are trying to do is find where you connect. And it's, it's really cool. I find it is amazing. Is there one site in particular, I don't know if any of them are sponsoring this event or not, but is there one site in particular that you recommend for people who are interested in getting into this work? I do, and they are sponsoring. <laughs> 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 but objectively, I find them incredible. I mean, there, there are four main ones that I use, which are... Um, Genie and uh, Mocavo. And well, how do you spell Mocavo? M O C A V O. Wicketry is wonderful. Family Search, uh, 23andMe, Family Tree DNA. So all of these. Uh, I'm on Ancestry.com. You don't know That's recommend. a great one, too. All right. It's a great one. Um, so, AJ Jacobs, I want to thank you. Tell us once again how people can participate in the Global Family Reunion. Well, they should come on Saturday. In, uh, Where at, is it? It's in New York, uh, at the New York Hall of Science, indoors and outdoors. And it is uh, globalfamilyreunion.com. So uh, please do come. It is going to be a family reunion you actually want to go to. Or this other tagline, the mother of all family reunions. That's very good. Thank you. And on that, we end AJ Jacobs, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you.